G'day. In this video we'll be looking at actually animating a chest to open and close when we don't actually have the animation from our 3D modeling software, whether the asset was purchased off the asset store or it's just going to be easier to make a quick animation in the animation system within Unity. Um, just to demonstrate what it is, I'm just going to quickly hit play and you'll see those chests open and then they stay opened. They're not actually in a trigger state at all, so I can add a trigger state if I needed to. However, that one we, is just a matter of doing the exact same thing as what we did over here. As you can see, I've added a top bar if you're getting confused. And you can add those bits and pieces just like we've had before, um, including the sound, obviously. So just again, just to show you again what we're going to do is we're going to get that chest just to open like that. Now, the problem that we actually have is the asset that we actually have is from the big environment pack. And if we go and open it up, we go to our prefabs, we'll see either an open chest already, and that's what that one is, or we'll see a chest like that. And if we go through, select the individual piece, and then move it over across onto the top of it, that's close enough for now, you'll see that they either are always closed, or always open. You don't get that animation effect. So to do that, what we're going to do is let's actually delete off the bits and pieces to start fresh. Let's actually uh, leave those two there, shall we? Okay, so the very first thing that we actually need to do is we need to go and create our prefab for it. So the very first thing is we could use these prefabs that were already created in the asset pack that was downloaded. However, I found that every time that you create something from a pre-made asset, it does have its problems and it does make it harder if something does go wrong. So in this case, I'm actually going to start off with the actual chest that hasn't been set up. It's just the model, no textures have been applied. So in the case of this one, we actually have two different LODs, so two different levels of detail. You can tell that that one's a very simple model for if you're far away. And if we go to that chest, it has a little bit more polygons and a little bit more detail to it. So I'm actually going to select the higher level odds, and you'll see that that is quite large. That's all right for the moment. And same for the cap. Okay, now that you actually have that, what you'll need to do is let's actually place it in a particular zero place. So I'm going to just go zero, zero, zero. It's going to place it over there, and I'm going to place this one over at zero, 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 two. And you can see that both of those have turned up. Now, you'll also notice that they're actually sideways. So let's actually go through and rotate them. But before I rotate them, I might actually apply the material to it purely to make it just that little bit easier. And I might also turn off my lighting to make it easier to see. So now that I've actually got that, I want to rotate it. Oops. Rotate negative 90. And again, negative 90. And what you'll see is that will come out quite nicely in regards to it. Let's take Y up to 1.5. So it's always good to keep rounder numbers, especially when you're starting to do some animating. And going from there, and that looks about right. Oop. Let's just move it across just a bit. So let's take that one to 1.15, and let's take that one to 0. Okay, so from here what you actually need to do is we actually need to start creating a couple of different things on it. So remembering that that chest here is the one that we're working on, and I'm just actually going to delete that one off to go from there. Now, the very next thing that we actually do need to do is we currently have, I'll even remove that chest as well. So going through our hierarchy, we'll actually see that we have a chest and a chest cap. So what we'll actually do is we'll actually create a new empty game object. And the reason why we're going to create a new empty game object is because if we actually partner it together in the way that it actually works, it actually allows the animation to be offset of that empty game object. If we didn't, it'll be offset 
to the world and it's very hard to have duplicate animations or very hard to have the same animation duplicate times. So it is one of those things and I'll explain that as we go through. So let's call that game object um, and rename that to just champ chest. Um, we could call it chest empty or anything, it doesn't really matter at this stage. The very next thing is we'll select both of those components and parent them to chest. So now we have those two bits and pieces. The chest itself, we don't need to animate at all. And that is one thing that we don't need to do. Um, however, the chest lid is what we do need to animate. So I'm actually going to come in and go add component. And I'm actually going to type in, if you haven't actually got that there, I can just type in animation. Now there is animator. We want animation. So make sure you select animation. And you'll see it, that it looks like this. So from here, we actually need to open up a new window that we haven't actually seen before. And that's called the animator window. So window, or not animator, animation. So you'll have animation and animator. Animator is when you're starting to get into the mechanism stuff. However, animation is what we want, which you can access by control six. So when we actually go through, you can attach it and move it around, but I like to keep it a little bit separate. It makes things a little bit easier for me. And you can actually go between each window to really get it going. So the very first thing with the animation window, if you've never seen it before, is we do actually need to select the object we want to move, and you can see that that's come through. Now, for our animation to take place, we need to insert keyframes. Now, this works the same like Flash. You have your keyframe, and then the program will calculate where it needs to go for a smooth ride. So we're going to hit the Record tool, and by selecting the Record tool, we are presented with a dialog box to save our animation to. So let's just go to underscore animations. And I'm actually going to call this one demo chest open. Now you can actually see in my assets window under animations, I've already got a couple of them going. Um, the demo chest one is the one that we're going to use for this video. So we select chest cap, move that one across so we can see it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record again. And what it does is it actually goes through and sets the scene and inspector recorded into the animation curves. Now the animation curves is what's actually going to be happening in this section of the window. It's going to show how the numbers change from one to the other. Now we don't actually need to deal with any of the other components. We only need to deal with the transform component because we're only going to rotate and possibly move the chest lid back. So I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to try and add a keyframe. Now, if I try and add a keyframe, nothing's going to happen. And that's because it doesn't know what to set. And it's actually thinking smart. It doesn't want to set everything. What I do want to set is I do want to set all my position values to currently where they are. So I'm just going to right button click or normal click and go add key. And you'll see that three different dots have appeared. Red, green and blue for the different positions and the keyframe that's there. So the next thing I want to do is I do know I want to rotate the lid. So I'm going to add those curves in or add keys in now. And what that does is that actually allows me to add a number of different components. Now to go through the next component, I can actually go through and start manually rotating in my scene. And as I do that, you'll see that the values are changed both in my inspector here as well as in my inspector there. So I'm just going to select that one again. It's at 0.23. And I'm just going to select this one. Again, always make sure it's recording. And I'm going to set that one to 0.23. And the reason for that is because that's where it's starting. So we don't get that glitch at the start. The very next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and set all those to defaults. Once I've done that, I can take that through to 130, doesn't matter where. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and rotate with my rotate tool exactly how that needs to rotate. Now currently that's setting all those different values, which is not what I really wanted. I only wanted as I'm rotating that to rotate my X1. And you can tell that by a number of different things. I can see that this is the number here changing as I'm doing that. If I select the right one. And it's the pink line which correlates to that number there which 
correlates to rotation X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click off that for the moment, click back on it, and just to reset them, I'm going to delete the curves off both, and we're going to start again. So from here, what we can do is we'll go through, add our keys, at zero, 0, add our keys, and you'll notice that there's a couple of different components. So I'm only going to want to rotate the X value here. So at 130, I'm going to rotate the X, and that's the one that I want to select. And if that's the one I want to select, then that's what I'm going to go through and change. So you'll notice that it's the only one that's changing. I'm going to rotate it to about there and add that key. The very next thing is that doesn't really look like it's opened up the chest properly. It's actually a positional thing that needs to happen as well. So I'm going to hit W and select my three positions. And going from there, just move the chest up to roughly where it is. Now you can be a little bit more accurate with your movements because you'll have a bit more time. And we'll just add the key. Now it should be automatically adding, but just in case. From there, let's actually just do a quick demo of what it looks like. Hit play. Now obviously that doesn't look right. Now why is that? Well, we can actually see that the Y and Z is changing. And we don't want the Y and Z to change from when we were just rotating the X before. So where have we gone wrong? So let's have a quick look here. Well, my Y and Z is 90 and negative 90, whereas here it's 0 and 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in 90 and negative 90. Now, although I've changed that, the way it works is that it actually is keeping those 90s here as well as it over here. So I'll just hit record. And 90 and negative 90 is the same as here. So the yellow and blue stay in the same spot. There's no rotation. So if I go through and hit play, it's now gotten rid of that spin. Now that's going a little bit too fast for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click play to pause it, zoom out by scrolling back on the mouse wheel, and grab this key and drag it all the way to three seconds. So that will actually slow it down so it opens a lot slower. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do is it says default down here. I'm actually going to change the type of animation it is, and I could loop it, ping, so, ping pong, so it goes back and forth. In this case, I'm going to go once, because I only want it to open once. Once it's open, it's open. And, well, as I'm going through, it's going a lot slower, but I reckon I could open up that chest a little bit further. So I'm going to just grab the key marker, and just bring that one up just a bit. Well, that's not quite what I wanted, is it? So let's just hit Control Z to undo that. Hitting rotation X, and then I can move that one individually and take that one all the way back. And holding down Shift will mean it's not gonna go back and forth. It's gonna snap. So that looks a little bit better. Let's hit play. It goes all the way back now, rather than stopping. And even though this says once, you will see the constant animation going. It's when you play it that will matter. The final thing I'm going to do for this is it does actually kind of snap. It's, it's not a real free-flowing movement. It's not realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some curves to this to make it a little bit smoother. So to do that, I'm going to select Rotation X so I can only see that particular curve. I'm going to right button click and go Free Smooth. Now Free Smooth actually gives me this little handle and what it does is it allows me to bend the curve in a way that it opens. So by doing that, you won't notice too much of a difference, but it starts to slow down when it gets to the end. I'm actually going to bring that one up just a bit more. And if I keep bringing it up, you'll see that it actually bounces back. So I don't want that. There we go. And we're also going to open it a little bit slower as well. So I'm going to right back and click, go okay, free smooth. And just so it's opening a little bit slower. That looks a little bit more realistic. And I'm happy with that now. So now that I've got that, what I actually want to do is I'll close down my animation window. And what you'll see is the animation clip doesn't always apply to it. So I'm going to pick out of my assets animations folder. I'm going to see this demo chest. And from here, on my chest cap, I can actually go through and click and drag 
my demo chest over the animation. The very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play and look for that chest straight away. You see that open, slows down, and it stays open. So from here, we now actually have a working chest, and it actually works quite well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a prefab. So to create the prefab, I could place it in my prefabs folder. I'm going to keep the one that I've already created, and again, right button click, go create prefab, and call this one demo chest open. Now I've got an empty prefab and I know that because of two reasons. The first one is it's the white box, not blue, and it's also not showing me a demo, uh, preview of that. So I'm going to grab the whole kit, so the chest, the lid that has the animation attached, and the chest empty game object. So I'm going to drag the chest empty game object down and drag down. So it looks identical at the moment because it is. And I can click and drag that demo chest on again and hit play. And you'll see that they both open quite well. The next thing is, is I can rotate this one however I want. So I'm just going to rotate it that way. And when I hit play, it rotates it in regards to the game empty game object's position. So without this empty game object at the top, you'll end up, it will, that lid that you've just created will end up having the animation over here. And there are a number of problems with it. So always remember to put it in an empty game object and then start your animation because otherwise you'll have to redo your animation to do that. The other benefit is I can keep on putting all these demo chests out and rotate them whichever way I want. So let's rotate that one and change the size as well. So I could have a really, really small one. And you can see that one just over here. That's that real small one. Or if I really wanted to, zoom out a bit. Rotate that one round. Just stupidly large for the moment. And you can see that open as well. So there's a whole heap of different things that you can do with animations and if I walk all the way around this one you'll see that that lid stopped there as well and I've fallen off the edge. So there's a number of different things you can do I'm just going to delete that off but once you have that prefab you can put as many of those on as you need and change the rotation as much as you want and size and you can just place those into your game. Now you could actually go through and get that animation playing automatically um, just as that happens but that's not really realistic when you start playing your game you don't want all your chests to open. So what you would actually do is you would actually key it in with your triggers. And remember how we walk through this trigger section that you can walk through and it plays a particle and a sound. You could actually trigger it to open up a chest and play that chest animation. So try and put the two uh, demos together and hopefully that's helped you. If there's any other questions, feel free to ask on Edmodo. Um, on the comments or just in person is fine um, and we'll see how we go.